this video we're going to discuss the development of the integrator reports in OCalc Pro. I would suggest that you should take a look at the plugin development videos before looking at this because a lot of the same concepts apply. Reports are essentially code plugins that hook directly into the OCalc data model and allow you to make really very complex reports, much more complex than you'd be able to do with a traditional sort of RDLC or SQL reporting um, report generator. And the reason for this is that you have direct access to all the parameters about the entire model, all of the load analysis and the sweep analysis and that sort of thing. So let's take a look at what's involved. As with the plugins, if I go look in my documents folder and I go down to my Visual Studio 2012 templates project templates section you'll see that that I have installed the optional OCalc Pro folder in which case in which case I have both the plugin template that we looked at earlier and the report template once those things are in place if I go ahead and I run Visual Studio and I say I want to make a new project you'll see that in my OCalc Pro section under C Sharp, there's an OCalc Pro report, and we'll call it my first report. And we say OK, and it goes ahead and builds up our template. And let's take a look at our solution. And you see it makes some helpers to help you make the microdoc tables. And we'll talk about microdoc in a second. And then it makes the report.cs. Um, folder which has two classes in it the font manager which we'll also talk about in a second and then the actual report so let's take a look at the at what you find in the actual report class the first thing you'll see when you look at this class is that some sort of housekeeping has been done for you and it has included a reference to microdoc both the document object model and the tables model and tables are very useful for laying out your report so the entire reporting framework is based on an open source project called microdoc from the PDR PDF sharp group and if we go to PDF sharp.net to the microdoc section you get a pretty good set of documentation for how to use the microdoc framework microdoc is essentially a framework for dynamically creating documents and converting them into PDF and RTF and displaying them so we take advantage of that um, a because it's pretty widely used and B because the documentation is very good so I'd encourage you to go to PDF sharp.net and look at the microdoc overview and dig down and look at some of the samples and under the microdoc section there's tons of examples there's hello worlds there's fancier viewers there's how do I include images there's how do I make tables and so on and so forth it's pretty straightforward stuff but you have to understand the document framework and the um, both the wiki and the forums are very useful for that so back in our report.cs file we see that here is in fact the instance of the report class um, we set up for you the standard font and so it expects you to first put in what is the name that's going to appear in the list of, of known reports and we're going to call this my report so that's and I can also change the description of it a little bit longer if I want to now here's the next thing you have to say because OCalc Pro can handle many different types of structures but it is required that the reports it's not necessarily required that the reports work on all of them there's a method that you have to implement called is applicable and what it's going to do is pass into you a poll and you see it's the base class and then you're going to examine that and say, well, okay, given this type of structure, is this report make any sense? And so when the report template is, or when the report window is pulled up, the list of available reports comes up, and it's on a per poll structure type basis. And so here I'm going to take a look, and I'm going to say, okay, the first thing I have to say is, am I actually a lot turned on or off? And it always does that. Um, so when you go into the manage report section, you can turn these reports on or off. The next thing it says is, okay, this is is this a wood poll? 
If so, then return true, otherwise return false. So what we're saying here is my poll is only available for, or my report is only available for web poll. If I said that this is PPL steel poll, for example, it, it could work. Uh, you can see how that would work. And of course I can have it be available for more, it would be applicable for more than one type. Now the next thing is, is it applicable for type? And this is used for controlling the behavior of what is visible when you pull up the batch report window. So I'm not saying, am I applicable for a particular poll, for an instance of a poll, am I just applicable for the type? And again, I'm saying if my type is would poll, then, I, then I'm going to turn on, and otherwise I'm going to turn off. Now the interesting thing I can do here is I could say, okay, as a general rule, I'm available for would polls, but in my is applicable, I could actually test an attribute. I could say, hey, you know, I'm only available for particular species of would poll, and I could say if pp if people dot get value species is I don't know southern southern pine, then turn on otherwise turn off. So I can make pretty fine reports that are only available in uh, very limited situations. The next method we see here is the create report method. Now, interestingly, see there's a method called create report that creates the header of the report and then add poll. Now, the reason that you would need this is that reports can be implemented as two flavors. They can either be group reports, in which case it's a single report that's going to report on a whole group of polls, in which case the create report method would be called once and the add poll method would be called multiple times. Or in the case of what we're trying to do here, it's just a single report for a single poll. So create report gets called once, add poll gets called once, and off we go. So let's go ahead and look at the add poll method. Now you see it's totally blank here because I haven't got any values that I'm going to put into this. So I'm going to go ahead, and since you don't want to watch me type, I'm just going to take something that I have previously done and put it in here. And let's take a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is to ask PPL main what the, what the path of the pplx file that I'm doing the report for is. I'm going to take just the file name portion and I'm going to save that because I'm going to want to use it. And the next thing I'm going to do is get the poll load info object, and we've talked about that when we were doing plugins, and the report items parameters block. And what the report items parameters block is, is a set of values that are commonly used in making reports. The documentation for this parameter block is available on our GitHub page. Um, and you should really take a look at that. Now, all of the values in the report parameters block, and let's let's actually go look at the definition of that just very quickly, <coughs> um, would be available to you if you manually were to traverse the model and go get them. What happens here is we um, go ahead and assist you by, by putting them all together in one place. So we give you some various conversion routines up here. Um, we give you value, for example, here's all your aux data fields, here's your shear strength, here's your circumference at the tip, um, here's your deflection angles, your modulus of rupture, ice thickness, all of these parameters all made available, all rolled up into one place and made very easy for you to get at so you can build up your reports. <coughs> So, I have my report parameters block, I have my poll load info, I'm going to go ahead and create a table, and I'm going to tell it that this table has four columns, and they're evenly spaced, and then I'm going to say that I want this to use the small font, which I defined up above, and I want it to have its borders be visible, so it's going to be sort of a classic table. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add rows to this table and again I'm taking advantage of the helper method that we supply for you so I'm going to say I'm going to add a row I'm going to add a capacity use a label that says what's my capacity utilization left justified I'm going to say what's my height and I'm going to say what's my wind angle and so what this is going to do is make my header row and so in my first row I'm going to put the maximum of each of those values and here we can see that we're using our report parameters block so I'm doing the MCU uh, height and wind. So if I say 
MCU height and MCU wind formatted the way I want, right justified, and put into um, the, the, the third and fourth cells of that table. Same values at the ground line. So here's my GCU, GCU. Here's my vertical buckling. So my BCU, BCU. And um, finally, I do a little bit of housekeeping to say, hey, I want to set, I want to set an additional edge. So I want to make the top um, of the uh, header, or the, the, the you know the, all the cells in the header, be um, have a border on both sides. And I want to do the same thing at the bottom. And I say finalize the table, which finishes all up. And I now say I'm done. And so, just as easy as that, we've gone ahead and we've created a report. So, at, just with, as with the plugins, I have to tell um, OCalc that I want to use this while I'm trying to do the development. So, we'll go into my Solution Explorer, and if we go under my Properties, exactly as with the plugins, you can see that the build events were in fact populated for you to A, take the DLL, rename it as a PPLRPT file, place it in the right location, move the PDV file over there. So the only thing that's left for me to do is to, in fact, um, tell the debugger that I want to use OCalc as my actual executable. And the reason, of course, I have to do that is that I can't start a DLL as my main project. I have, an, have to have an executable to do that. So I'm going to say start external program. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to program files, Osmos, OCalc Pro, bin, pick PDL, and now I should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to start this beast. It's going to think about it for a second. And sometimes the debugger takes a little while to fire things up. And here we go. So I'm going to load a poll, and now if I go to my, my reports tab, you can see that my report is in the list. I click my report, it thinks about it for a second, and here's exactly what we told it to do. Let me zoom in so we can see that. So um, here's the standard header that, that the system always makes. You can, of course, justify this. Here's the table we created. Here's the header row we created. And here's the MCU, GCU, and, and BCU values right down the line, and all's right with the world. So, you know, there's a fair amount involved in doing this, but you also have extreme amount of flexibility. You have ac access to all of the various parameters, and you have the ability to lay this thing out and make it look exactly as you want because the MigraDoc PDF Sharp framework is so flexible. So, as with the plugins, we do offer. Um, training on how to do this, but it's also something you can certainly do on your own using the documentation we provide and using the documentation from the MigraDoc group, and um, it gives you really extreme flexibility and unprecedented access into the data structures to make reports that look exactly and report exactly what you want, and maybe even combine uh, OCALC data with data from external data sources that you might have within your infrastructure.